The Pelicans gave an update on Zion Williamson's hamstring injury, and while it's optimistic, there's rumors are that he isn't close. So, will Zion Williamson play again this season? Let's figure it out in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Friday final show of the week, two games for the Pelicans this weekend too, we'll recap those on Monday and maybe they can build off of that win over the Dallas Mavericks and get a little bit of a winning streak going. But today I want to look at Zion Williamson. There's a lot of rumors floating out there right now around him. We got an official update from the Pelicans. So the question then becomes, when's he going to play? Will he play again this season? Should he play again this season? Should he not? These are all really interesting and valid things, and I'm going to dive into all of these. So let's give you kind of an update on where things stand. With Zion Williamson right now, the Pelicans announced an update yesterday. They, the New Orleans Pelicans announced today that forward Zion Williamson was recently reevaluated for his right hamstring strain. Medical imaging revealed that Williamson's hamstring continues to heal. His next examination will take place in approximately two weeks. So let's go off their timeline. Two weeks from now, around March 22nd. He's not going to be ready to go probably then. And even if he was medically cleared, there needs to be a ramp up period usually. So maybe two more weeks from that. So four weeks from say right now, that puts you around April 5th. The season ends April 9th. It would maybe, maybe give him about three games to play before the postseason, the play in tournament or the regular playoffs would start. It's not a lot of time. If we go maybe a little bit more optimistic and push things and say three weeks from now. It puts you right around March 29th. They have a game on March 30th, and that's about six games left to go in the regular season. But there's also a back-to-back in there where he certainly wouldn't play. So you're looking at five games maybe for Zion Williamson if he comes back around March 29th. You know, anyone who's telling you right now they know he's going to play or isn't or knows he's not going to play is wrong. There's a rumor out there, and this comes from Brian Windhorse on the Hoops Collective ESPN podcast, that the setback Zion Williamson had was significant and that he's not even close right now. Very well could be true. Very well could not be true. We don't really know because we're getting kind of basic updates from the Pels and no one's really talking because I don't think they necessarily No, I think this is just simply Zion trying to work his way back and hamstrings are a very tricky injury with a high degree of, you know, the possibility that they could re-aggravate it, that there could be a setback and, you know, damage things even more. But if we go back from the original setback from which happened right around February 13th. I forget the day they announced it. You know, if you look at six weeks from there and hamstring injuries tend to take a minimum of six weeks. It puts you right around the week of March 27th. So that March 30th game, I think, is probably the day, the game that we're looking at for on a most optimistic timeline for Zion Williamson to return. That's probably a best case scenario. Might happen sooner. And everything coming out from the Pels right now is not that he's being shut down. Antonio Daniels was on Pro Pels Talk. He even said it. You know, everything he's heard is that they plan on playing Zion Williamson again. They certainly want him to play if he can. And I know he wants to play. Heck, Zion wanted to play in the postseason last year after missing the whole season. He wanted to play in that first round series against the Phoenix Suns. The Pelicans said no. After missing all that time, he can't can't do this. Wasn't medically cleared either. He wants to play. And there's a lot at stake and a lot to play for. And we'll look at that even more so in the next segment of why Zion Williamson should be playing. And then the third segment, look, there's reasons to argue against him playing too. And we'll list those out as well. And then you should let me know in the comments down below what you think. Should he be playing? Should he not be playing? Should they shut him down for the remainder of the season? But simply put, no one knows yet if he will play or won't play. And anyone who tells you with absolute certainty isn't being truthful. No one knows 
just yet. But the messaging coming from the Pelicans has been pretty consistent on this, that we're trying to get him healthy and we're hopeful that he will play. And there's been no kind of talk of, yeah, maybe we need to shut him down. Maybe we need to look at that sort of thing. I don't think they're hiding the injury as they kind of go through season ticket renewals here in the playoff push or anything like that. I think it's just simply, it's an injury. It takes time and it's one of the trickier type of injuries that you can have out there. So you've got to be really, really careful when it comes to things like hamstrings because, look, Zion's future is the most important thing here. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in the third segment, but, you know, the Pelican season has been a little bit derailed from a top four seed. I don't see that happening really in any capacity now. Out of the playing tournament, yeah, but not top four seed, which means you're going up against one of the better teams in the league then. Well, how, how good do you feel your chances are, particularly when they haven't been a good road team either? So I think when you look at it like that, there's not necessarily a reason to rush him back. But there's plenty left to play for, and there's no reason that the Pelicans should be looking to rule him out. So let's look at this coming up here in the next segment of today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Here's why Zion Williamson should be playing. There's a lot of reasons, and I don't want us to lose sight of sometimes the ultimate goal here when it comes to rooting for a team and what they're trying to accomplish. So that's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. You're not the same person you were a year or two ago, and sometimes events in your life really happen that force you to reevaluate things. So BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. I've used BetterHelp before to get me through tough times. Life doesn't come with a playbook. It can be difficult to figure out how to handle certain situations or to work on your mindset. You know, whether it's positive coping skills, setting boundaries with others, or just being empowered to be the best version of yourself. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get started with 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA to get started. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. No one else coming to you like this. No weeks between shows. No days between shows. No months between shows either. We're here just talking Pels Monday through Friday. So subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. If you want to support the channel, number one thing you can do, comment down below. Do you think Zion should play this season if he's healthy or should they just shut him down and we focus on the offseason and next year? But let me spell out the reasons why he should play because I do think there's lots of reasons. But it starts with, with one simple one. You got to win in the NBA. You got to try and win. And that's what we all want to see the Pelicans do. How much fun was the postseason last year? The play-in tournament games. The first-round series against the Phoenix Suns going to six. It was awesome. I had the best time. You probably had the best time. you th That's kind of what you want to do, what you live for. You can't always be rebuilding, tanking. You've got to move forward and just go with it at a certain point. And it does feel like the Pelicans are at that period of time. I was just doing our Locked On NBA, our national show. I do it every Wednesday, and we were talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder on there. And I said, like, this is probably a year for them to go for it. They've shut down Shea Gilgis-Alexander the past couple of years, but he's a guy that could legitimately be an all-NBA player. And he just had the uh, a comment of, after their big win over the Golden State Warriors, you know, you love these meaningful games at the end of the season. This is what he lives for. This is what he's always wanted. This is what the fans want, too. So go for it. Try and win. To not tank sends a message to your fan base and what makes you feel like a more serious NBA franchise. So if you can win some extra games by playing Zion Williamson, win the extra games by playing Zion Williamson and try and win in the postseason. I think those are exactly what you want to be trying to do. Is the ultimate goal to win a championship? Is it to build a fan base and have some success, even if you don't win a title, but maybe have some fun in the postseason for a number of years? They got a team that is capable of doing that now. So don't tank, go and do it. You can point to the lottery pick thing, but 
What I think a lot of people don't realize is they don't have two first round picks in this upcoming draft. It's not they have the Pelicans pick and the Lakers pick. It is a pick swap. They can pick, the Pelicans can choose which of the picks they want. They can either have their first round pick or the Lakers first round pick. So obviously the one they're going to choose is whichever one is closer to one. So if they tank and the Lakers also miss the postseason, it's not like you have two draft lottery picks. You would just have one of them. And at that point, who knows which one it'll be. And they also just might be really close. So maybe you improve your draft spot from 14 to 13. I'd rather have the extra playoff games than that's kind of the, the situation you're looking at. You know, if you had 13 and 14, maybe, maybe a different story. Maybe. But... That's not what we're faced with here. And so if the Pelicans do make the play-in tournament and do make the postseason, it likely is at the expense of the Lakers. So you just do the pick swap anyway, and you get their lottery pick and you're in the postseason. So there's no real point to tanking unless you think you're going to have a worse record than the Lakers do, and by a significant amount that it really dramatically improves your lottery odd chances, but they're probably too far away from that. And they're not really going to be a near a top six pick, top seven pick, something like that. Even the Lakers might not be. So there's no point in trying to do something like that, which you would maybe consider if you're going to shut down Zion Williamson. But at a certain point, you want to instill a winning culture in your locker room, in your guys. And the only way you do that is by winning. At a certain point, you just can't have guys who have lost and lost and lost their entire careers. It drags everyone down. And look, the players don't care about the draft pick. They want to go out and make more money and win basketball games. They don't care if the Pelicans get the number one pick overall or not. Maybe they would be a little bit, but it also means someone's going to probably lose their job. A player. They're not thrilled about that. They don't ever care about that. They're kind of focused on the now. So building your culture, building your locker room, making it a winning one and doing what it takes to win and sending that message around the league that we are trying to compete and win games here. You do that by not shutting down Zion Williamson. So even if it's three games and you have him on a minutes restriction in the postseason, fine by me, fine by me. That's what we want. That's what the fans deserve. So go and win basketball games it's what you're here to do it's why i think the thunder shouldn't be tanking and they should go and do this and instead of making shea gilgis alexander unhappy go and compete and don't have him potentially want out because he's like god this is an unserious franchise that never wants to win what is message does that send to cj mccollum what message does that send to brandon ingram who seemed to enjoy his time in the postseason and look genuinely stung when they lost Game six, at home in New Orleans, he just got right off the court. Didn't want to shake hands with anybody. I kind of love that. Bottle that feeling up and go out and unleash it on the court. Never feel that bad again. Use it as motivation. I like that. So even if you make the postseason and don't win, I think that that shows a lot of growth. It teaches a certain mentality to these kind of guys. And I think that's the period that we're in for the Pelicans, not tanking, not playing for lottery odds, ping pong balls, or anything like that. So go and win games. The other reason is, and this one's a big one to me too, Zion wants to play. We've been through an icy situation with him. He hated the minutes restriction, the bursts that he was on after his rookie year, or during his rookie year when he came back from the meniscus, whatever it was. Hated that. He wanted to play in the postseason last year. Put out videos of him dunking and doing all of those things to show I'm healthy, I can go out and I can compete. If he wants to play, let him play. At a certain point, you do need to take the kid gloves off of him and let him go do his thing, even if it maybe means there's a risk of injury. He can't be covered in bubble wrap his whole career. And if you want Zion Williamson to stay long term, but you never let him play, that's going to upset him. He's been upset before by that eventually and look that's a reason for the frosty relationship they had for a little bit and it was winning that brought him back into the fold unless you are so out on zion williamson that you're like yeah man request a trade i don't care i don't want to go down that road let him play if he's healthy even if it's for three games that's what he's paid to do that's what we as fans want to see and that's only going to make the relationship between him and the pelicans stronger and get rid of and kind of create it, you know, make it evaporate any more unhappiness. That's a good thing. So there's plenty of reasons to play him. 
even if it's just for three games, six games, whatever it is, it might be, even if it is, unfortunately, on a minutes restriction, which I think he would understand in this case. But look, there are reasons, even if that's not the route I want them to go, there are reasons why he shouldn't be playing. And this has more to do with the long-term future. Let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel. It's a stretch run of the NBA season. Now is the perfect time to download the FanDuel app, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from the money line to points scored through Threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. I had CJ McCollum five or more assists and the Pelicans to win. Paid me four times my money on that bet. Knew it was coming. They were that seemed like a game that they were gonna win. So go put your knowledge to the test. Increase your bankroll a little bit. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. Monday through Friday, we are here. We'll be back on Monday recapping the weekend of games for y'all. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Tell a friend about the show. Get them clued in because we got meaningful games down the stretch. And what more can you ask for? As Shea Gilgis Alexander would say. And hopefully Zion Williamson would say too. So subscribe. And number one thing you can do is support the show. Comment down below on YouTube. Derek Carr, Saints. Is he good? Is he not good? I'm still kind of jury's out in my opinion on this. But Ross Jackson, host of Locked on Saints, is making helping me make sense of everything black and gold. Make sure Locked on Saints is your second listen, especially after the news this week. So we just looked at why Zion Williamson should be playing. I think it's a pretty straightforward argument. It's also a pretty straightforward argument on why he shouldn't play. And it starts with where we are right now. He had an injury setback. This is a tricky injury to navigate. Hamstrings are tough. The chance of re-aggravation and a setback is high, even now. Guys can come back in, play for a little bit, and then go, nope, doesn't feel right, need to go out and miss more games. And at a... You know, you, you're going to eventually get to a point where he just needs to be healthy. He wants to average more than 30 games played per season, which is not what he's doing right now. And the best way to do that is not this season, but it's next season. So should they be more forward thinking? Should it be time to shut him down, just let him get healthy, and spend the offseason getting back in shape and come into next year looking like a monster? You know, the expectations for the Pelicans this season, which was getting out of the first round of the playoffs, I think, has kind of gone out the window with the way injuries to Zion and Brandon Ingram have just derailed everything. You know, we're looking at play-in tournament, maybe the sixth seed at best here. Not quite what we were hoping for, the same as a top four seed, making your road to advancing that much harder. And if it looks unlikely that they're going to do that, is it worth Zion Williamson you know, re-aggravating that injury out there on the court while he's playing. Is it worth it to potentially have him re-aggravate the injury just in the rehab right now? If he's like, I've got to get back so I can play the final six games, three games, whatever it is, and he's going too hard in his rehab and not taking it at the appropriate pace. And I don't know if he is or not. I don't know if this is how he would approach it or not. And we don't know if the medical staff would let him do this or not. You know, if he goes too hard... And then suffers another setback, well, then you've completely missed this. And who knows how long it's going to take? Is it going to bleed into the offseason preparations? Does it mean he's not going to get kind of the rest that he needs or doesn't need? And is it going to then impact next year? Those are questions that are kind of up in the air right now. So if he pushes too hard or suffers a re-aggravation out there on the court, what's it mean for next year when this year's not entirely a waste I think there's still a lot to play for as I just talked about right even getting into the postseason you lose in the first round but it's competitive and you just learn a little bit more about yourselves your team I think that's a very helpful thing but if it's not ultimately helping you reach the goals that you want to have do you need to play him and risk anything else and is it better to just be upfront with the fans about where everything stands right now rather than going through some of the process that we've done before that definitely alienates people Feels like we be, you're being lied to and what have you. Even though I've long said they don't owe us any explanation 
or any transparency when it comes to injuries. They don't. It's not printed on your ticket. There's no contract of being a fan where it says they do they need to do that. And it's with, you know, such high stakes and people's medical stuff. Can't really get into all that stuff all the time. You got to keep some things maybe secret from others. So I think the biggest thing is worrying about a re-aggravation and not wanting that to occur. And from there, yeah, it makes a lot of sense at that point, just shut them down, focus on next year, knowing that, you know, you'll still have a lottery pick, either Lakers or yours. You're going to get one no matter what. So you're kind of in a similar-ish boat. You know, let these guys compete. If they can get into the postseason with just this group of guys without Zion, great. We had fun with that last year. They're certainly capable of doing that. So if you're going to get bounced out in the first round anyway because you're the seventh seed and you're taking on the Sacramento Kings, let's say, in the first round, which is going to be a rough one, you know, if you're going to lose anyway, do you need Zion out there? Even if you were going to lose with him? The answer is probably no. So just focus on maybe next year. There's going to be problems with that. He's going to want to play. He's going to want to play in the postseason if you make it. All the reasons why we just said in the last segment – but if you're focusing on the long term and you have him under a long term contract, yeah, that's maybe the right move just so you can finally get him healthy for a year, go into next season perfectly healthy and hopefully not suffer any sort of injuries and work through this stuff this offseason. Though he was healthy going into the year and then this hamstring just happened. And I don't know if these are the type of things you can really avoid as an NBA player. We'll see. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Should he play? Should he not play? I think he should play. I think he should play. There's no reason to shut him down. I don't think anyone really has a definitive answer to it yet. But if he can play three games, I'm cool with him playing three games. If he can't play any games, I'm cool with him just playing in the postseason, the playing tournament, having to make his return for that. I want to see him on the biggest stage in those moments. I really, really do. But I can tell you from the timeline that we talked about in the first segment, it's going to be really, really close. So we'll see whether it happens or not. We should hopefully get a good update on Zion Williamson in about two weeks time. So thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for listening throughout today and throughout the week. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison at Nola Jake on Twitter. We'll be back with y'all on Monday and hopefully we get an update on Brandon Ingram somewhat soon as well. And we'll talk about everything we saw over the weekend then.